<clears throat> I'm going to go to some other questions. Uh, we'll now transition into the audience Q&A. Um, I have a very <clears throat> uh, direct question from a friend of ours, uh, General Chenenbaum, uh, Lieutenant General retired. And his question is, uh, from your observations, do you believe the Koreans are capable of executing wartime operational control? Hmm. Bum, I wish you'd, uh, I'd be, I wish you'd ask me a, uh, an easier question. Uh, but you know, it's, it's really funny because I, I was the 8th Army commander in 2006. Uh, and, and, and not to get into politics, but, but uh, again, the, our presidents, our national command authorities, uh, that, there was pretty high tension about having a, the, the foreigner living in our capital. And uh, of course, the 8th Army at that time was, was, a, was a service component. It wasn't a field army. But I remember having the opportunity to, and I think it was called uh, uh, Mugenwa, which was, it was a, it was a all service uh, kind of a mentoring program that the ROC JCS did. And I went down there and, and it was a two, I did it six times. And I used a metaphor as I explained to our ROC partners uh, what this OPCON transfer was all about. And I said, you know, it's, it's like this. For 60 plus years, we've been driving down a highway and the name of the highway is Defense of the Peninsula uh, and Maintaining the Armistice. That's the name of the highway. And we both happen to be traveling in the same car. And for 60 plus years, the U.S. side has had the steering wheel and our ROC partner, our battle buddy, has been in the right side. Okay, so our, our leaders have said, we're going we're gonna to go after this thing called OPCON transfer. And so we're going to switch positions in the same car. So as the passenger in the car now, I have a, my skin is in the game and I, it's very, it's very important to me that you have all the driving skills necessary to safely and continuously maintain our vehicle along this highway to maintain the Alliance and defend the peninsula. I used to tell them, you could get worried if I mentioned to you, okay, I'm going to let you go in your car and I'm going to follow in my car behind you. That's an entirely different kettle of fish. So, it is about the both of us going step by step. Uh, and, and again, that's, I think, why we encourage our deputies. If you look at the Combined Forces Command, ROC U.S. Combined Forces Command, at each principal staff level, there's a, a ROC and a U.S. officer. They both get the opportunities to, uh, to, if you will, grab the steering wheel. We have a combined division now uh, in Combined Forces Command. So we're using every opportunity we can. We still have things thing, have some work to do in terms of the interoperability of some of our, especially our, our command uh, information machines, uh, KJIX and Centrix K, so that we can pass information transparently uh, back and forth to one another. And, uh, but I think it certainly is possible. I think we have a vested interest, Korea, and our alliance, in my own personal opinion, is one of the few places our country has, uh, has made a deal and stuck to it and is the shining example of what a bilateral alliance is all about. Yeah, yeah thanks. I, I would just add that, you know, the exercises, si since the transition is conditions-based, the exercises are, are, the, are the perfect vehicle um, to, to see if, if, the, if there's resident capability um, and the conditions for this transition are, are, are met. It's one way to exercise that. Um, I've got another on if, hey Bernie, if one other question. I mean, again, not, not to get into the specifics, but back to Chunnenbun's question. Uh, and as we all know, that that whole transfer was, you know, was going to be conditions based. Uh, and and the, command, the command post, the computer assisted command post exercises certainly play part in that. Uh, and, you know, and some of that is uh, on our rock ally uh, acquiring certain capabilities. And it's also uh, depending upon whether or not the, the environment on the peninsula, uh, you know, makes sense to do that transition. Uh, again, goes back to the location of the capital, and uh, there's no room for there's no room for amateurs, and there's no room for re for rehearsals, and uh, we've got to be ready to fight tonight together. Yeah, I I agree with you. Um, earlier, you had talked about the. Um, the CMX phase, and the and the difference between the CMX and the <clears throat> and the computer assisted phase. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, I'd like to go back to that and just uh, get some additional insight on um, throughout the, the, the various exercises in commands, um, both and commanders really, both Korean and US. Um, how, did, how was that phase best used in, 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 uh, from your perspective? And again, uh, where it brought in the, the national command authorities from both countries. The, uh, yeah, great question, Bernie. I, that was my favorite part of the exercise. I, I really enjoyed the CMX part because I thought that was the, that was the part that uh, had the, the intellectual uh, calculus, you know, it was the graduate level of uh, understanding all the, the potential levers uh, and not just the military one, but you know, you talk about Permisi, the political, the military, the informational, the economic, all those possible things that could be brought because we wanted, we wanted to go back to armistice. And hopefully that's both of us, not just one of us, <laughs> but we want to go back to the armistice. And, uh, and so we're going to do everything we can for that. The best exercise that I think I saw with that regard was, was when, uh, 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 I'm having a brain cramp here, but our, our current ambassador, uh, when, when he was the PACOM commander. Uh, Admiral Harris. Thanks, Admiral I Harris. I mean, um, Ambassador yes. Harris. Ambassador, but then Admiral Harris. I mean, and called PACOM at that time. They were all into our exercise. They were, they were supporting the, C, the, the Rocky West Combined Forces Command commander in the exercise. He had the PACOM staff talking to our staff absolutely no daylight between PACOM at that point and CSC. It, it, was, it was a thing of beauty. It's probably one of those best exercises that I had seen uh, that brought us together because there's always a tension because PACOM, Indo-PACOM owns China, not CSC, not Combined Forces Command. And so uh, having to work through that third party and if, and if they had, if they were distracted, if you will, and had uh, uh, their, attentions, their attention was in another part of the theater, and figured that uh, you could take care of your own business on the peninsula it made it more difficult. So I thought that was, uh, again, the CMX allowed us to bring in, the, you know, the three letter agencies, the, the state, uh, our national command authorities. Uh, you, you did the MCM, the SCM, the security consultative meeting, the military consultative meeting uh, to work through those issues. And, and again, a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work by the staff and, and then also the commander imposing is discipline under formation so they weren't getting preoccupied but with uh, everyday activities because remember I said this was done normally at at their their armistice workplace and not at a battle you know a, a fight tonight uh, command post so sometimes they would get get distracted and you wanted to focus on this on this command uh, this crisis management exercise yeah th you know the to me that was always um, one of the most interesting and unpredictable uh, phases of, of the exercise, uh, the, the crisis management exercise. The, just the, the uh, complexity um, of, of, of managing the crisis and the, as, you, as you accurately state, the number of agencies in both, in both uh, governments uh, that are involved in that and uh, in real time. And, you know, we're, we're we're not, you know, we're not trying to bring it to conflict, although that's the next phase of the exercise. We're trying to do just the opposite. And um, it, it's, it's always um, very, very interesting. Um, and it's also a phase of the exercise, I think, where, where both countries have uh, a tremendous opportunity to, to learn and to grow from um, that dialogue, that interaction. Um, so yeah, I, I, I always found it uh, fascinating. Tough, um, but, but fascinating. Um, let's see if we have time for one more. Um, as a dinosaur, I'm a little challenged with this. I'll try um, to keep my response, Bernie. Yeah, uh, that this will be the the last question, um, and it's really, you know, with your years of experience on how we did these combined exercises, and you know how they've changed over the 
you know, the decades um, that I think you told me earlier, your first exercise was in 1986. Um, where, 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 do you, where do you see them in the next uh, three to five years? I mean, do you have any insight on where you think we'll be in three to five years with these exercises? Thanks, Bernie. Well, first of all, I'm, you know, as we, we switch command posts, and of course now uh, the, the center of gravity for, for U.S. Forces Korea and, and the uh, U.S. Force stars at uh, Camp Humphreys and uh, down south, out of, out of Seoul. And so occupying the new facilities and just getting used to that is, is one thing. Uh, I think we emerge and, you know, we've got new space command. We've got uh, cyber, of course, has been growing over the years and has it it is, uh, become more and more uh, customary to play. It's interesting how we, we take, and we used to do it at the AARs. We would, we would uh, ask a question that would force folks to have to talk about an issue that they would otherwise prefer not to discuss, such as WMD, weapons of mass destruction, uh, third party intervention, TPI. This one might also include cyber, it could include space uh, and other levers. So I, I see that we talked about multi-domain training and I see that as the domains increase in number and complexity, uh, again, our computer-assisted exercise will allow us uh, to touch on those and, again, help us train that proficiency and that confidence and that trust in each other so that we're able to, uh, to take our equipment and, uh, and our soldiers, our service members, uh, and our civilian leadership and, uh, and, again, form a tight team, no daylight between us, fully capable and that the guy up north fully appreciates just how ready we are and, uh, and, and, and behaves himself up there. So, and I would, uh, I would also, if this is the end, I'd also want to say that to our, all of our rock friends out there, Guan Bok Jol, which of course this Saturday, two days from now, is uh, Rock Liberation Day, very big day in Korean culture. And, uh, and just want to wish, wish them a, uh, a happy Korean Independence Day. Back, back to you, Steve. I, um, yeah, sir, I, I just, um, in closing this out, I just really want to thank you for your time today, uh, for the time it took for you to prepare for this, uh, but most importantly for your decades of service and, um, you know, your servant's heart that, that is driving you to continue to make a contribution. And um, so thank you for all that. You work on the KD, KDVA board, you work as a senior mentor. Um, and um, as I did in all eight of those sessions, some were more painful than others. Um, I learned some interesting insights uh, this morning, so uh, my sincere thanks. And I'd just like to close by, by um, highlighting the fact that these important exercises remind us of uh, vital work that our service members and veterans have done and continue to do for the Iraq and U.S. Alliance. And uh, what, one of the ways KDVA will continue to advocate for them and their work is by hosting a webinar series focused on the experience and contributions of the Korean defense veterans who took the mantle of the Rock us Alliance from our Korean War veterans and have been carrying it for seven decades. Um, KDVA will send some details soon. So um, thank you all for your interest and your participation and your support. Thank you.